We are Nadia Buick and Madeline King. We're the Fashion Archives. The Fashion Archives was a way for us to sort of come together and bring our interests in sort of fashion, art, design together into a single project. You know, there's so much material in the John Oxley Library collection that we would sort of superficially looked at. We knew that there was a lot more that we could explore and we wanted the opportunity to sort of really narrow our focus. And we were interested in this context of, you know, manufacture and retail. We felt like we could quite comprehensively chart uh, in Queensland the development and rise and fall to some extent of uh, Queensland fashion retailers and dressmakers, designers, tailors, the sort of full range of manufacturers. And the Queensland Business Leaders Hall of Fame Fellowship seemed like a really good opportunity for us because it was a combination of research into the area that we were interested in, but also a bit more focused in that sort of business area, which we had touched on with the Fashion Archives. Doing the fellowship was this opportunity to kind of professionalise what we were doing. And having access to the collection was fantastic for us. I mean, as Madeline said, we had access to a lot of the online resources already for the Fashion Archives, but there was a depth of material that we really hadn't touched at all with that earlier project. So being able to access business records, see the photographs in the flesh, get all the catalogues out, go through clippings, use the microfilm as well. So we actually started the project by creating a table of over 200 Queensland fashion business names, which is incredible if you think about it. It's just uh, such a volume of retailers and manufacturers that a lot of people aren't aware even existed. And I don't think people fully understand just how thriving Queensland's fashion scene was sort of in the 19th and uh, 20th centuries. One of the really great discoveries was a business called Players, uh, which started in the 1930s and ran until the 70s when it was actually purchased by Sports Girl. And there were some photographs in the collection. There were some of the most beautiful fashion images of incredible window displays. And then through that, we actually were contacted by the family of, of Harry Hansford, who started the business. And they had a really fabulous archive of stuff as well. So that was a great opportunity for us to use the collection, but also perhaps bring in some new items. There were some new acquisitions in the time that we were doing our fellowship. So when we actually first started, um, we were tipped off to the fact that the uh, family of the incredible Jennings Corsetry Company had recently donated a full range of really fascinating items relating to what was a hugely successful um, underwear and corsetry company that really went for, it was about a century. A century. We found some really sort of lovely demonstrations of some of the factual information we'd already covered. So things like when, you know, the it was a husband and wife team for a while and they sort of split in a sort of fairly acrimonious way. We discovered, for example, um, some business stationery that had the building um, with the husband's name scratched out of it. Well, we're still releasing the content that we produced for the, the, the fellowship project, which is called High Street Histories. And the way that we decided to structure that was a series of 16 profiles and created sort of quite comprehensive profiles of their history together with illustrations using the collection materials. And then we are working on a book. We think it's a really important thing to sort of have a, a legacy for this project beyond that sort of ephemeral online release. So we're working towards a book that uh, is tentatively titled Remotely Fashionable and it's going to sort of be an anthology of both the Fashion Archives publication and the new research that we have undertaken through the Fellowship Project. So that's really exciting for us.